Growing up, I always felt invisible at home. My parents seemed to care only about my sister, Mary. It was always, Mary needs this, or Mary wants that. She was the center of their universe, and I was just a shadow. But everything changed the day my parents skipped one of the biggest moments of my life. Something snapped inside me that day. I realized I couldn't just sit back and let this continue. Sometimes I wonder why they even adopted me. Was it because they wanted another child? Or was I just an extra burden they had to carry? I often felt like I was brought into their lives only to be ignored. Mary never wanted me around, and my parents seemed more interested in keeping her happy than making me feel loved. When I was just four years old, my life was turned upside down. My biological parents and I were in a terrible car accident. They didn't survive, and I was the only one who made it out alive, though I was badly hurt. I spent almost a year in the hospital, the first four months in a coma. The rest of the time, I was dealing with severe seizures from the trauma. Those days were the loneliest of my life. I was scared, lost, and sometimes I even blamed myself for what happened. Eventually, I was well enough to leave the hospital, but I had nowhere to go, no family to take me in. So I was sent to an orphanage far from the city, a place the doctors thought would help me heal, away from the noise and chaos. Three years later, my life changed again. I was adopted by a family who already had a daughter, Mary. My adoptive parents knew all about my past, the accident, the nightmares, the breakdowns. They were warned, but they still took me in, promising to give me a loving home. At first, I believed it could be a fresh start, a place where I could feel safe and loved. But soon, it became clear that I was an outsider. The first three years with my new family were good. I felt safe, even loved. But as time passed, things changed. Mary began to distance herself from me, and it wasn't just the typical sibling rivalry. She seemed resentful, like I was stealing something from her. She couldn't understand why I needed so much attention, why my parents were always checking on me. What she didn't realize was that I was still healing, still struggling with the loss of my parents and the trauma of the accident. By the time I started middle school, my parents had pulled back. They weren't as attentive and I thought maybe they were trying to help me grow up, to become more independent. But it wasn't just that. Mary had begun to complain. She said she felt neglected, that she was struggling because my parents focused too much on me, and they listened to her. I wasn't even allowed to join the soccer team because my parents were worried I'd get hurt, but I was allowed to play racket sports, which they thought was safer. Even with these small freedoms, Mary's resentment grew. High school made everything worse. I developed a crush on one of Mary's friends, and we started dating. I had no idea that this would widen the gap between Mary and me even more. She acted like I was taking everything from her, her parents, her friends. After a few months, I ended the relationship. My PTSD was flaring up, and I was scared that my anger and stress might hurt someone. I started going to therapy, but my parents never came with me. There was always an excuse always something Mary needed that kept them away. Four months before graduation, I finally felt like I was making progress. I was excited. I wanted my parents to be there to celebrate with me. On the big day, I dressed up in the suit my parents had bought and waited for them in the living room. Suddenly, I heard a loud crash from the stairs. Mary was at the bottom, bleeding from a cut on her forehead. My heart raced as I called for my parents. They rushed down, panicked. Jacob pushed me, Mary whispered. I was stunned. I would never do that. Not on my graduation day. Not ever. But my parents believed her without question. They rushed her to the hospital, handing me money for a cab to my own graduation. I sat in that cab, feeling a mix of anger, hurt, and disbelief. My parents had chosen Mary, again, over me. At graduation, I watched as other families cheered for their kids, and I wished just once that mine could be there for me. After the ceremony, a friend invited me to a party, but I went home instead, hoping my parents would want to talk. When I walked in, they were waiting for me, not to apologize, but to tell me how wrong I was for what I did to Mary. They didn't even ask for my side of the story. After that day, I kept my distance from Mary. 
It was clear she was trying to turn my parents against me, and it was working. When I applied to college, my parents seemed proud at first, but soon they told me they couldn't afford the tuition. I knew Mary had something to do with it, she always did, but I didn't let that stop me. I found a local bank willing to sponsor me, and I went to college. And I went to college. During my time there, I met my future wife and her brother, Scott. Scott became like the brother I never had, always there when I needed him. College was a fresh start, away from the constant feeling of being second best. My parents rarely called, and I focused on building a life for myself. When I graduated, I invited them to the ceremony, hoping things might be different. But on the morning of my graduation, my mom called, Mary had been robbed, and they needed to stay with her. Mary needs us more than you do, she said. That was it. I knew then that I would never come first. Years later, I got engaged. I wanted to share the news with my family, hoping they'd be happy for me. My parents were thrilled, but Mary was anything but. She refused to help with the wedding plan, saying she was too busy. I even went to her, asking her to let mom and dad be there for me just this once. She just smirked. On my wedding day, my parents didn't show up. Again. I got a voicemail from my dad saying Mary had been in a car accident. I knew, deep down, it was just another one of her lies. I got married without my parents there. My wife and her brother tried to cheer me up, but it hurt. After the wedding, we went on our honeymoon. And for the first time, I felt truly happy. My wife understood me in a way my family never did. When we got back, Scott showed us the edited wedding photos. He'd added my parents in, making it look like they were there. At first, it felt strange, but then Scott suggested I post them online, just to see how Mary would react. So I did. The next day, my phone wouldn't stop ringing. My parents were furious. They called me unethical and shameless for posting those photos. They said Mary was devastated, that she felt left out. I laughed. It was the first time I felt like I had any power over my own life. I told my dad, You gave me a roof, but you never gave me a home. You always chose Mary over me, and now you want me to feel guilty? I told them to read Mary's diary if they wanted the truth. They did. And for the first time, they saw Mary for who she really was. Manipulative, jealous, willing to ruin my life just to keep their attention. It hurt them to realize it, but it was the truth. And finally, they understood why I had always felt so alone. The weeks that followed were strange. My parents called me several times, wanting to make amends. They apologized for the way they treated me, and they begged me to come visit, to let them be part of my life again. I didn't know how to feel. Part of me wanted to forgive them, to have the family I always dreamed of, but another part of me felt that it was too late. The years of hurt and neglect had left deep scars, and I wasn't sure if I could ever truly trust them again. I spoke to my wife about it, and she listened patiently, holding my hand as I tried to sort through my emotions. You don't have to decide right now, she said softly. Take your time. You deserve to heal at your own pace. Her words gave me comfort. For the first time, I realized that I didn't need to rush into anything. I had my own family now, a family that loved me unconditionally. I could take my time to figure out what I wanted from my past. Eventually, I decided to meet with my parents, but on my terms. I invited them to a small dinner at our apartment, nothing too formal, just a chance to talk. When they arrived, they looked nervous, unsure of what to expect. My dad was the first to speak. Jacob, we're so sorry for everything. We should have seen what was happening, but we were blind. We let Mary manipulate us, and we hurt you because of it. My mom nodded, her eyes filled with tears. We love you, Jacob. We always have. We just, we didn't know how to balance everything. We failed you, and we're so, so sorry. Their words were sincere, and I could see the pain in their eyes. It was the first time they had ever truly acknowledged the hurt they had caused me. I took a deep breath, feeling a mix of emotions. I appreciate your apology, I said, my voice steady but it's going to take time for me to heal. I can't just forget everything that happened. I need to know that if we move forward, things will be different. I need to know that I matter to you. 
My parents nodded, and my dad reached across the table to take my hand. We want to do whatever it takes to make things right. We know it won't be easy, but we're willing to put in the effort. We want you to be part of our lives again, if you'll let us. That night, we talked for hours. It wasn't a perfect reunion, and there were still a lot of unresolved feelings, but it was a start. For the first time in a long time, I felt like maybe there was hope for us. Maybe, just maybe, we could find a way to be a family again. As the weeks went by, my parents made an effort to be more involved in my life. They called regularly, not just to talk about Mary, but to ask how I was doing, how my wife was doing. They even invited us over for dinner. And while I was hesitant at first, I eventually agreed. It was strange being back in the house I'd grown up in, but it also felt like a chance to create new memories, better ones. Mary, on the other hand, was a different story. She hadn't reached out to me since everything had come to light. I knew she was angry, embarrassed that her manipulations had been exposed. Part of me wanted to confront her, to ask why she had felt the need to ruin every important moment of my life. But another part of me knew that I might never get the answers I was looking for. Mary had her own issues, her own insecurities, and I couldn't change that. All I could do was focus on my own healing. One day, out of the blue, I received a letter from Mary. It was short, just a few lines, but it took me by surprise. She wrote that she was sorry for everything, that she knew she had hurt me, and that she hoped one day I could forgive her. I didn't know what to make of it. The apology felt hollow, almost like she was doing it out of obligation rather than genuine remorse. But at the same time, it was something. It was more than I ever thought I'd get from her. I decided not to respond, at least not right away. I needed time to process everything, to figure out what I wanted to say. Forgiveness wasn't something I could give easily, not after everything she had done. But holding on to the anger wasn't helping me either. I wanted to move forward, to let go of the pain that had held me back for so long. In the meantime, I focused on the future. My wife and I were expecting our first child, and I was determined to be the kind of father I had always wished for. I wanted to give my child the love and support that I had missed out on. I wanted to be there for every important moment, to celebrate their successes and comfort them in their failures. I wanted to be the kind of parent who made their child feel seen, heard, and loved. When our daughter was born, it was the happiest day of my life. Holding her in my arms, I felt a sense of purpose that I had never felt before. This was my chance to break the cycle, to create a family built on love and understanding. My parents came to visit us at the hospital, and for the first time, I saw genuine joy in their eyes as they held their granddaughter. It was a small step, but it felt like progress. Over time, the relationship with my parents continued to improve. It wasn't perfect, and there were still moments when the past would resurface, bringing with it old wounds. But we were trying, all of us. And that was enough for now. As for Mary, she remained distant, and I had come to accept that. Not every relationship could be fixed, and that was okay. I had my own family now, and I was determined to give them the best of me. Looking back, I realized that the pain I had gone through had shaped me, but it didn't define me. I had found love, built a life for myself, and created a family that brought me more joy than I ever thought possible. My past was filled with shadows, but my future was bright. And for the first time, I felt at peace. Have you ever dealt with a sibling who tried to take over every bit of attention? I'd love to hear your stories. Let's talk about it in the comments and thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe for more stories filled with real-life twists. I'll be back soon with more. See you next time.